He said, I want you to say to my people something and let them know that I'm aware of something that has happened in the earth. I said, what is it, God? He said, Nathan, he said, my church has learned how to function with He said, my people used to seek me for everything. They would come to me for all things. He said, but they have grown up so that they came to a position and to a stance that they don't even have to acknowledge me in all their ways any longer so that I can direct their path. I said, God, what are you saying to me? He said, Nathan, say to my people these words. He said, say to them that they have learned how to successfully have church, whether I show up or not. So they've learned how to go through the motions, conference after conference, Revival after revival. Convention after convention. And never reach their full potentiality. And never reach the heights of the dimensions of glory that I desire to reveal to them in the spirit. I said, God, what are you saying to me? He said, Nathan, he said, if you notice, everybody from the smallest storefront to the largest cathedral, he said, when you go in the motions, he said, ask them, where are the miracle rooms? He said, where is the place where when they walk in, it's so hollow that they have to take their shoes off? They can dress in white and lay before me for hours and days. So when people walk in, the anointing is so thick. He said, he said, unfortunately, it used to be in my sanctuary. He said, but what we've done now is allow people to dictate to us the manifestation of my glory so that they settle themselves for just having a service and they put up people that necessarily doesn't have a walk with me and all the anointing re rusing and over their lives he said uh, we sit in congregations and I understand that judgment is going to begin at the house of God but he said uh, he said Nathan Simmons but we're sitting in a place where there are people that are functioning that don't even have the baptism of the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues because we don't have time to tarry with the souls any longer for them to receive the Holy Ghost <laughs> So we've got folks singing in the choir and on the usher board and on the deacon board and on the musician staff and I can hear nobody in the administrative staff that we ain't ever heard speak in tongues before. He said, and you're dealing with people now that have just been a part of the church for so long that they forgot that it's one baptism and many refillings. He said, they forgot that it's not how long you've been in this thing, but it's what you're doing while you're here. That we have been in church that we have forgot what it feels like to lose control because they told us anything we can't control we don't need he said but I long for a people that will allow me to take control and do whatever I want to do do me a favor lay hands on somebody's shoulder and say anything God wants to do in you Please let them do it. And do me a favor and throw your hands up and say, God, any way you bless me, I'll be satisfied. He 
He said, it should be strange to see folks laid out on the altar, stretched in between the pews, cried out to God, save me the more, help me the more, come the more, deliver me the more. I said, look, Master, what are you saying now? He said, Nathan, you have gotten so caught up in the system of it. That's what he said, Nathan. Till service is systematic. We know what's going to happen, when it's going to happen. And we put up the best singers and the best musicians and the best expositors and the best representation just in case the Holy Ghost don't show up because we know that they know what to do and how to carry the service. He said, but Nathan, he said, do you remember when on the back of the program, we would write this program is subject to be changed by the moving of the Holy Ghost? Because you may be black, you may be white, you may be rich, you may be poor, you may be up, you may be down, but when the Lord gets ready, you've got them. Do me a favor, push them. I said, get on out of God's way. He said, Nathan, he said, this is what has happened. But he said, just observe it. Just look about it. Look at, look at it. I said, yes, Lord. He said, Nathan, he said, we put up singers. Not because of the quality of their living, but the quality of their singing. So that because they can sing like a mockingbird, we put them up. He said, but what you don't understand is when they stand, some of them have the nastiest attitudes, the worst dispositions. You can see that peacock spirit, grand and great. I can't hear nobody. So that when they get through singing, they're untouchable. I wish I could say this like I feel. He said, Nathan, he said, we're dealing with the greatest musicians. He said, they're the most talented. He said, we don't just have an organist and an upright piano and a leading and bass guitar player now. We got a posse. The church now has just become another word for a nightclub jam. Oh, God, help me tonight. He said, because instead of musicians getting chords in the spirit, they're listening to jazz. to the R&B stations and they're taking the tools from the world and bringing them in and that's why you ain't seeing no demons being cast out because you can't cast no demon playing them out by playing jazz in the Holy Ghost sanctuary It doesn't stop just with the singers and the musicians. It's the whole Levitical core. He said, because now what you have in the pulpit are stars, actors and actresses. So the ministry now is not about anointing, it's about personality. 
money you can raise, how many people you can pack out so you can tell everybody, honey, I slayed them niggas. Them. I tried to kill and when I ran back and did like that my god they went crazy huh he said they know how to philosophize they are psychiatrists in the pulpit he said we have financiers that know how to speak prosperity but we forgot that the Bible says what shall it profit a man to gain this whole wide world and tell your neighbor tell them I don't want to lose my soul 